Hello again! In our last episode, we talked about the basics of dry cat food, or more popularly known as kibble. We talked about what a cat's diet requires as well as the benefits and risks of giving them a dry food diet. If you haven't watched that yet, then you may want to because that's part one of our cat nutrition series. For your reference, I've included the link in the description box below, and then you can get back here after for part two, where we'll talk about the basics of wet cat food. Is it better than dry food? Something you should avoid giving your cat? Or is it actually the best preference for their diet? Hey guys, welcome to Furry Feline Facts, a perfect catalog of cat stats. In today's video, we're going to talk about the basic things you need to know about wet food. This is already part two of a three-part series on cat nutrition, so if you want what's best for your cat, you better stay tuned. If you're not already a follower of Furry Feline Facts, meow is the time to click the subscribe and notification bell. If you are, give yourself a round of applause. Okay, enough kitten around, it's meow or never. Okay, so what is wet cat food? Well, like dry food, it's quite literal. Dry cat food, as we discussed in part one, usually has about six to 10% of the moisture only. That's why it's dry. On the other hand, wet cat food has about 70 to 80% of moisture. Wild cats like lions and tigers get their hydration from their hunt, which is usually made up of 60 to 70% water. Felines like humans need much water. Cats have to take in 3.5 to 4.5 ounces of water per five pounds of weight every day. So if you're concerned about your cat's hydration needs, which of course you need to be, then wet cat food should be on your grocery list. Why not just give him or her enough water? If you haven't watched part one yet, I discussed in there how cats are not avid fans of drinking water. We don't exactly know if they don't like the taste of water or if they're just oblivious of drinking. Experts say though that cats, unlike dogs, have very low thirst drives. If dry food equals kibble, then wet food is to canned food. Now, there are tons of commercially canned foods in the market, and some of them are not very trustworthy. How do you choose what's best for your pet? The answer is that you have to be vigilant and inspect the labels. Check the food's ingredients. Let me share with you some of the main things you need to look at on the labels. Number one, moisture amount. The product should have high amounts of moisture, but you know that already. Number two, named protein. This is another ingredient that should be in high amounts and should be named or indicated like beef, chicken, or tuna. Turn away from products that use flavorings and extracts only. For example, chicken extract or beef flavor. Those are false sources of required proteins for your pet. When looking at labels, it's quite confusing to determine which has more protein content, especially when comparing dry and wet food. Because most times, dry food usually displays a larger percentage on the labels than wet food. But to get the actual protein content, one must take into consideration the moisture content of the food, which significantly differs between dry and wet food. So I'm going to show you how. First, look for the protein percentage, and then the moisture content, which are both on the guaranteed analysis. Then subtract the moisture content from 100 to arrive at the percentage of dry matter. Lastly, divide the protein percentage by the percentage of dry matter and multiply it to 100. Let's take, for example, chicken kibble or food C for dry food, which has 25% protein and 10% moisture. On the other side, we have beef canned food or food B for wet food, which has 15% protein and 70% moisture. Using the formula, let's first find out the actual protein content of food C, the chicken kibble. So subtracting the 10% moisture content from 100, we get 90% of dry matter. Then the protein content of 25% divided by the computed 90% dry matter and multiplied to 100. The actual protein content for food C is 27.78%. Let's note that. Now for our food B, the beef canned food with a protein content of 15% and 70% moisture. Subtract the 70% moisture content from 100, we get 30% of dry matter. Then the protein content of 15% divided by 30% dry matter multiplied to 100. The result is an actual protein content of 50%. A very significant difference compared to the chicken kibble with a higher indicated protein percentage. So yes, being a responsible cat owner means you have to do the math. Now for the third component to look for. Number three, natural vitamins and minerals. Preferred sources would be veggies and herbs, but additives are tolerable. But they should have as much as the vitamins and minerals we discussed in part one. Lastly, cat food needs to have number four, aged suited formulas. 
Similar to humans, there are formulas specific to kittens, adults, and senior cats. If you can't decide on which wet cat food to pick up on the shelf, then this could be a great tiebreaker. Taurine is good for a young cat's muscle building, while calcium would strengthen an old cat's bones and teeth. Those are just two examples of formulas. So, these are the four main ingredients to look for in the labels. There are also three things that you should avoid. Artificial ingredients, loads of carbs, and also grains, as some may cause allergies and digestive problems. One of the most common questions about wet cat food from cat owners is, is it safe to make homemade wet cat food? I believe this is often asked because though wet cat food is loaded with benefits, it is also way more expensive than dry food. So the answer is a relative yes. Making the formulation is not easy. If you want what's best for your cat, then the nutrient compositions should be exact. So I suggest that if you plan on making your own pet food, you should consult the vet first. Maybe you can look online for some recipes and then ask your vet if the formulation would be fine for your cat. Because as I've mentioned in part one, every cat is unique and there's no one size fits all for everyone. If you're still watching, then I would like to treat you with more information. I have scoured the internet to find tips on homemade cat food recipes and I would like to share them with you. And maybe you can later ask your vet if the recipe is suitable for your cat. This is from Pets WebMD, a very easy recipe. You just need a protein source, carbs, fiber, fat, a commercial blend of vitamins and minerals, and a food processor. Simply mix these ingredients in a food processor. Protein, cooked dark meat chicken, beef, pork, lamb, salmon or tuna, 83 grams or three weight ounces. Carbohydrate, cooked white rice, oatmeal, barley, corn, peas or pasta, 50 grams or one third cup. Fiber, cooked sweet potato, without skin, 30 grams or one fifth cup. Fat, optional, vegetable, safflower, olive oil or fish oil, one fourth teaspoon. Balance IT Feline, 2.7 grams or half a red scoop in the container. This is a commercial blend of vitamins and minerals. Some sources would use sunflower oil, both as fat and vitamins and mineral sources because sunflower is packed with nutrients. Please be reminded that I am not a cat nutrition expert. No, far from that. I'm just a very vigilant, passionate cat servant. And also ask your vet if it's something you should give to your cat. Well, there you have it, your valuable lessons on wet food. I hope you learned a lot in this episode. I'm glad that many of you are interested in cat nutrition. Being on this video means you care a lot for those cute little devils. At the end of the day, what your cat wants is what he or she should get. Your cat may want wet food or prefer dry food. Leave the decision to them because they either want to eat what you serve or they simply don't. In that case, they'll get undernourished. I want to say again that vet consultation is always a must. Being a cat owner is a journey. I hope you had fun in this episode. This is part two of our cat nutrition series. For our last part, we will talk about raw food, so be sure to stay tuned. If you have other questions about wet cat food, you can leave them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Because as I've been saying, I kind of have my hands full taking care of a bunch of cats. But still, I'll try my best to send you an answer to your queries. So to end this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up for yours truly, a fellow cat lover. Make sure you subscribe to Furry Feline Facts, a perfect catalog of cat stats. And hit that notification bell to be sure you don't miss any of our pawsome content. See you next time.